Hey everyone, welcome to Teller Dev Call Monday, June 12. Um, yeah, should be a fun one. I just got back from Eat Prague. Had a good time, met a whole bunch of good people. Um, posted a little takeaway on my Twitter, but um, yeah, I mean, lot, lots of people like Teller. Uh, you know, people came up to me and, and wanted us to integrate on their chain or they wanted to, um, you know, mm -hmm. talk about how we would fit into their protocol. So it's like everybody knows Teller now. It's, it's super awesome. You know, very, very few people in the space aren't aware of us, which is very, very fun. Um, gave a speech out there. Um, I would say, yeah, speech went well. Overall, like what I see people doing in the ETH space, it's, um, it was, it was generally a lot of the same stuff. Still, still very, very DeFi focused. Um, <laughs> lots of people building new exotic financial products, which is, I'm not, I'm never too psyched about that, but uh, it's, yeah, it, it's always, you know, you, you know, you can go to a presentation on how to, yeah, extract fixed interest rates over a Uniswap pool or something like that, or <laughs> you know, like this. Is, it's cool. Um, but yeah, it was a super fun time. Uh, met a lot of good people. Um, very hopefully over the next few weeks, I'll kind of have some some updates with some projects or who are going to start building on us and uh, maybe some chains we can go to. So that was good. Um, yeah, so we'll just get kind of right into it. Um, Tim, over to you. Yeah, uh, I've got a an update to the Zodiac contracts. I got a PR ready for review um, and then moving on to updating the front end for that okay. right now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll do that today. That for okay. Um, cool. Spotting. You're muted. Are you? I don't really have anything interesting. I'm just running through everything that I run kind of on a daily basis, checking up on what happened over the weekend. I don't think there was anything exciting really, uh, you know, outside of price action. That was kind of exciting, but it's whatever. It's in a wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you apply for that? Hopefully you guys all did. Applied for ETH Foundation is giving away nodes. If you want like a node and you'll run it, you can apply for a grant. So go do that. Um, I was trying to think of a creative way to to say like I'm gonna offer I'm gonna open my note up to the public somehow was my angle. Yeah, you could. Um, well, I mean, you could even tell them like you could ask them like say like I, I'd also be willing to maybe even like you, you could update it and say you'll run an archive node for. Yeah. Everyone. You know that would be more helpful and then. True. True. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if Ethereum also would, like, I know they're interested in Ethereum, but, like, if you run a bunch of other chains, too, that would be useful. Um, but, yeah, and, and then also say you'll run, what client, do you run a certain client, or? No. I'm using Geth and Prism. Okay. Yeah. They usually, like, if you, if you can come up with any sort of custom ones, it's, like, minority clients are generally better, but. Cool. Akram? Um, I was working on uh, refactoring Teliot feeds, the reporter basically removing all the references to Teller X and whatnot, uh, added uh, the state command so you can stake manually without having to report. Um, just uh, refactored a lot of code, so I'm just trying to make sure I write tests and make sure the old tests are passing. Um, and also if you have time, I don't know, like maybe five, 10 minutes, I want to go over the stuff from uh, last week for the hashy stuff. Uh, I wrote tests for that. So I want to make a PR and but I want you to take a look first. Yeah. Let's stay on after this call. So whoever else wants to stay on too, <laughs> it'll be for those that don't know, hashy is the bridge. I, I think hashy is still a long time away. Like. We can make a PR and, and it'll be like, it's almost like just more of a public statement at this point that we're planning on supporting it, but they're probably still three to six months away from a vote on getting it to pass. Um, so 
don't hold your breath as far as actually getting this specific one implemented. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, still working on that balance for the front end tip thing. Tim and I were working on it a little bit on Friday. He helped me um, basically establish that this balance parameter is structured differently. It's in destruct. So I think I need to um, work with my friend ChatGPT a little bit and it might need to also reach out to the graph because um, it might not even be readable. But um, I think I just need to massage a little bit more how the... Uh, the code is structured because right now it's just structured for the way the other parameters are set. Thanks. Okay. Um, Owen. Yeah. So um, Frank is uh, he pushed like a Docker uh, container for me to test. It broke. He made a fix, so I need to test it again today. Then um, Diva stuff, I'm getting pools from their Mumbai subgraph and I'm updating the rest of the tests and trying to report. So I'm down. Yeah, and Spuddy, make sure you're trying to report for Diva too. Let us know if you need more stakes or anything. Uh, I don't, okay. Just follow, <laughs> follow along in the Diva channels, so. Yeah. Been oh, following along. This hasn't been anything to do yet. So, okay. yeah, I'll let you know as soon as you know you can test it. Yeah, man. Nice. No, I'm excited about that one. And then, yeah, I mean, on the biz dev front, like, have we heard anything from Raft or Tempest? Have we gotten anything from them? That'd be Mike. And I have a, um, we're going to put something out. Uh, I have a meeting with the, with their head of marketing to, okay cool uh, tomorrow to come up with that plan and then yeah we should you i'm sure you're meeting with diva too but yeah yeah i have um yeah, yeah i've already talked with vlad about it uh, we already had a, that meeting and i have um i have our our sort of spotlight post we're already drafted up ready to go and all that stuff that we need to do for whenever that happens cool yeah uh yeah, that's, that's about it. And then the other thing, oh, at, at ETH Prague, the cool things I liked for swag, the fanny packs were super popular. Uh, and then some protocol, I forget what protocol it was, but they had, like, they had a bunch of girls who were there and they didn't, the girls weren't wearing the t-shirts, but they were all wearing pins. So they had big pin, they had like pins with like the team name. So Brenda, we got to get you pins. And then, yeah. like, say, but pins are also cool for like backpacks and stuff. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Um, pins and patches. Yeah, it's like very, very old school, like underground punk rock. You'd want to have mm -hmm. a pin for every band you were into. Yeah, but but I liked the idea of the pins because, like, you know, you wear the T-shirt the first day, and then after that, like, nobody knows who where you work. So yeah, um, or the T-shirts don't don't fit you. So um, I was I was telling Spuddy on Friday that back. In the day, I like in 2017, I had pins for all the altcoins I was into at the time. Nice. That I would, I, I would be very embarrassed to go around. Where are they? I had this jacket that I would keep these pins on, and uh, it's like you're so all super habits. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would be very embarrassing to have those pins. I'm not going to tell you what they were. <laughs> um, nice. But anyway, <laughs> part uh, of the Taylor Museum. Uh, half year in review uh, blog will come up this week. Oh, cool. Got to pick a day. That's done. Yeah. And I mean, for those watching, like we're these past six months, like I know like the price, which maybe we'll talk about in the questions, but like the price doesn't reflect it at all, but we're kind of killing it as far as yeah. like, as far as like any other time in, in Teller history. I mean, like people are tipping a bajillion percent more than ever before uh <laughs> can we get those actual numbers yeah like it's it's literally infinity um <laughs> back to previous numbers and then i mean same with like our number of users has like over doubled in the past six months like 
we're, like people actually live on mainnet and pulling from us like we're it's it's coming along very very nicely um it's been awesome yeah and <laughs> we, we we still have some people in the pipeline too we have a lot of people who in the pipeline we're getting much better at identifying who actually is promising and is going to push stuff forward um and and delivering with it so yeah i mean it's it's actually been go like yeah i mean if, if we were here six months ago we would be psyched and obviously the price doesn't reflect it but you know it's, it's one of these things that, yeah i mean you have to have faith that eventually <laughs> price has some sort of underlying meaning to actual things going well right uh if not yes we're all screwed but yeah um i i think it does and and, and yeah we're just kind of hanging in there until then so any questions, Ryan's buddy? There's lots yeah, in the Discord. It, we, yeah, we've got a lot of multi-part questions. I'll, I'll rattle them off one at a time so we can cool. make them in part here. Um, let's see. First question. Uh, what are the main challenges of Teller at the moment? I mean, the big one, obviously, we always just hope we have more users. Um, and then, you know, like, what's the challenges as far as getting more users is, like, would be the issue. And, you know, there's, obviously, there's lots and lots of chains. How do you go on lots of chains? How do you sort of provide it? You know, there, there's a constant battle with users as far as, like, they want to pay as little as possible. <laughs> um, and, and, I mean, right, you know, this is a classic customers don't want to pay <laughs> like we want them to pay more so you know like there, there's always that trade-off especially like whenever other oracle providers like link or, or like just giving shit away for free um it, it can be tough um uh, other sort of issues you know obviously we had just talked about it like the price like <laughs> you, you want the price to sort of go up with you get a new user the price should go up like but it, it doesn't work like that um and then, yeah, and then it's the, the constant challenge, like, of even having a development network, you know, making sure that your staker set is decentralized, that, you know, you have people monitoring for disputes, things like this. This is, you know, the classic thing of, like, in, in any decentralized network, like, with Ethereum, how do you make sure you have decentralized stakers? How do you make sure that your people are actually running nodes? It's just, how do you make sure the community is involved and, and obviously, yeah, like the, that, those are good problems to have. And we like those problems. We want to keep them. So. Um, this Mayumos is the one asking these questions. He, he liked the Vitalik article, the three transitions, oh, something yeah. like this for Teller. Yeah, probably the same three. <laughs> um, no, like. We could obviously write an article on where where we see the space moving, but what, what were Vitalik's three like? Some of the issues with um, the three transitions that we're still working on in Ethereum are like scalability, UX, and privacy. Um, yeah. We, you know, even at ETH, people were talking about scalability. Like, I, th I think it was Friedrich Ernst. She, she those are those are you, you could apply those. Literally you apply them to the everything, but yeah, yeah, I mean, but like scalability like the issue the issue with scalability is like right right now we're at a point of like we're still not even close to being possible to have crypto like you know like he, he, she frederica was talking she said like if if 10 percent of the world wanted to onboard and do a transaction like she, she gave like ens transactions like you just wanted to go register a simple transaction on mainnet Ethereum, it would take two years to just process all of those <laughs> and do nothing else like and it's just ten percent of the population. Just ten percent of the world population. It's a lot of people. But it's a lot of people, but you know, you even scale it out to, uh, yeah. you know, you split it between like yeah. two hundred different L twos, and it's still just not even scalable. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't make sense, and gas prices would be through the roof. So, like, we still have lots of ways to go. I mean, we're we're way way more scalable than Bitcoin, and it, it's going well. But, uh, you know, that same with UX, like. There, there's just I, I think we're solving a lot of these issues and, and it's just going to take time so uh, I'm not too mm -hmm. concerned about it but yeah I mean for Teller it's like you know I, I think looking at the the change of Teller like which we'll, we'll talk in the future about it but like if 
how what does Teller look like in a multi-chain world or in a world with thousands and thousands of chains if, if that's the scaling solution um it'll be interesting you know there, there's like an inherent disconnect with Teller security as far as like right now we bridge tokens and how do we how do we sort of get around some of that and the chains competing against each other and then you also have um you know privacy aspects luckily that's not necessarily an issue for us I, I think like long run for teller some of the bigger issues are just like you know how do we make sure that um how do you this is probably this is more of like an oracle problem in general like if you had to say like what are the problems for long term for oracles and it's like you you run into a lot of a free rider problem along like um you want like the ETH price but then who pays to put the ETH price on chain um and it's actually really really hard because like you 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 almost always rely on the bigger protocols to do that and then mm -hmm. and then you know you, you you can have some issues there and then also you know we're talking like you know we want to do a decentralized CPI and and other like actual useful data that people really really want but the problem is is that's actually like kind of a public good in a lot of ways like who should fund that research and fund that survey? It's, it's actually not super clear, um, you know, and, and you can fund it as an Oracle mechanism, but maybe the people using it who are doing that, but, but yeah, it's, um, there's a lot of funding problems for Oracle's long-term. Not, not that obviously like we have ways that you can stake and you can get the data that you need, but if you're thinking about Oracle's more in general of, you know, be, being greater than just, being middleware it, it gets it gets uh fuzzy but i mean it's the same problem like blockchain yeah, too so, so. <laughs> we're not unique in in any sense sorry that was that was a little bit of a ramble but anybody else anybody else read the article <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah i'm um, we'll just move on to the next question um also, how high is the team's monthly cost all included? What is your runway without selling TRB? Uh, we, we have plenty of money. So, I mean, I don't think, you know, you guys can see how much we sell out of the, the main wallet. That's like our funds. If you're really curious, you can go deep dive into that. Um, but yeah, no. Yes. The... Some more context for that one is Muyu Moose was like going through wallets and trying to figure out how much TRB the team has and everything like that. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always, there's, we got money and we're going to keep fighting. Um, I've worked on Teller for months where we didn't have money. <laughs> and probably, yeah, obviously, probably not all of us, but, but you know, like, we're, we're going to keep going, we're going to keep grinding. And, I mean, the the ideal solution is you set this whole thing up so it doesn't even need us. We just do some research and party. Um, so, yeah, no, but but don't worry, we're not going away anytime soon. Uh, why and how do you think most crypto prices move in tandem because of our AMMs? No, because it's, I don't know, it's a, if anybody else wants to answer, but the answer is like everything's speculation, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's the same reason, same reason a lot of stock prices move in tandem. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, they're, they're bought and sold in like groups of different assets. Like yeah. these are my high, these are my high risk cryptos. These are my low risk cryptos. Okay. The market's moving. I'm going to sell my low risk cryptos. Like the, so like the people who are doing a lot of the trading and market making, they have a lot of different coins. And when they make a decision to buy or sell, they all move. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, it's why like an SEC action on crypto has much, you know, like a ban of crypto in the US has much more of an effect on your crypto price than whether or not you're doubling or tripling your users. Um, it's just the way it is, because that's that's where the money's coming from right now. Most of the value is all speculative. And this is Bitcoin. -y. This is everything. So. Mm -hmm. Um. And then just last one from Slick Mick. Hey team, do you guys know anything about a uh, Modulos ZK EVM by ColtDAO? Please tell me they are using us as their Oracle. These guys are all about decentralization and are going to be huge. This would be a lot more action for reporters and the protocol. 
would you consider reaching out to the DAO, even anonymously, to bring Teller to their attention, builder to builder? Uh, I will say, I, I definitely know of Colt. I, I walk by their table at Denver. Um, they definitely seem interesting. I do not know anything about the Modulos ZK, ZK AVM, though. Um, but definitely going to hop in their Discord and see what's going on there. So, like, thanks for bringing it to my attention. But do you guys know anything about Modulos ZK AVM? No, but yeah, if it's an EVM, it's probably looking for Oracle. So, yeah, tell yeah. Them us where we can get put on there for sure. Um, and then, yeah, on CultDAO, I, if you saw, plugging my deep dives, um, I had Oren from Gnosis Chain, who runs, uh, he was building Hashi, which is the bridge, uh, which Akram's working on. Um, but Oren is also one of the, what do they call them? I think they're summoners or something like that <laughs> in CultDAO. Uh, but he, he's, yeah, he's one of the, or overseers, I don't know, one of those, you, you He's he's high up and felt down, yeah. He was so, and then I reached out to them too and talked to them a little bit. So they know about talent. Um, so it's a huge community, gigantic. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll look into them. I'm sure there's some sort. If it's a DAO, there's going to be some sort of, you know, proposal process for it. I imagine. No, but it's like, Cult DAO. The way Cult DAO works is like you can become one of their projects. And then you give them like 10% of your tokens or something, and then they make you a member of Cult DAO. And then they give you like it's like a little, it's like a DAO VC type thing. And and then they scale projects that way um, through their community. Uh, I see. But yeah. So well, we wouldn't go that route. We would see if they want infrastructure. Right. <laughs> so. Anyway. Anything else? That's it. That's all I got. I don't know if there are there any other hidden ones, uh, Spuddy, that you might know about. Um. Now that I'm looking back over things, I don't see any more really. So. Cool. Super cool. Well, thanks everyone. We shall talk to you all next week.